my name is David Hall. I'm chairman of the Somerset Rivers Authority. The Somerset Rivers Authority is a, a group of partners. I obviously represent the County Council, but it's also made up of our District Council partners, the Environment Agency, the Parrot Drainage Board, and also Natural England. The catastrophic floods of 2013, 2014 were a life-changing event for very many people in Somerset. That's not to say that Somerset's never flooded before. Um, Somerset has flooded well, forever, basically, and attempts have been made to uh, manage the water, control the water, and drain parts of the levels since the early medieval times and before. There are a number of events that combine together to produce those dreadful floods that we saw. We had a period of very, very extended rainfall. It just rained, not just for weeks, for, for months, without let up and we'd had heavy rains the previous year, so the, the ground, the water table, was basically sodden. We also had a period of very, very high tides and strong onshore winds, making it very difficult for water to drain away in a natural way. So those combinations of factors came together and produced those dreadful floods. We brought together all the local stakeholders in one single partnership and worked together, put uh, our efforts and additional funding into what we now call additionality, extra work to make sure that that situation that uh, happened in 2013, 2014 never takes place again and people's lives and livelihoods aren't impacted in that same catastrophic way. West Geo farm on the Somerset levels near Moreland Village. We farm beef and arable, so we've got 450 to 500 cattle and 300 acres of arable, and we're self-sufficient, so everything we grow on the farm we feed back to the cattle. Water in 2014 was above this gate. It was here. So, you know, it was quite damp. <laughs> and then if we walk down, excuse the mess, but if we walk down here, down this passageway, we came across from Borough Mump, across through here, and we sailed over those gate posts. Now those gate posts are that high, and so the water was that high down there. Yeah. And we've got stakes down through here. There is a stake in the tree and it was sort of like 12 foot deep. It took 48 hours to get all the cattle out from the farm. We couldn't go the roads because if they were underwater, we had to go the old river bank. We started with two trailers and then we rang around friends and in the end we had 16 tractors and trailers help get them out. We'd got all the cattle out, but we couldn't get all the food out. The water had come in so deep. So I then went on to Twitter and Facebook and requesting, you know, if there was any forage anywhere, we really were desperate to feed our cows. Sedgemoor Market were brilliant, the auctioneers were brilliant because they found places for my cattle to go. So farmers had seen it on the news and had offered buildings. So the farming community was amazing. There seems to be a lot heavier rain. We don't tend to have two to 10 mil of rain in a day. We seem to have 25 mil a day. It seems to be very all or nothing, which obviously the water courses are gonna struggle with because we have deluges. It's like last week, 32 degree heat. You know, it's extremes of weather and it's not really seasons. It's not seasonal anymore. I'm Kate Simons. I'm chair of the action plan group that we have here in Moorland. And do you mind talking about the flooding that you and your neighbours experienced in 2014? The water level rose quite rapidly in a short space of time, but 
the, it ended up, it was about, well, it was in the cutlery drawer in my kitchen. So if you, the cutlery drawer is always the top drawer under the worktop. You pull it out and there was flood water in with knives and forks. So that was how deep it was in my house. The water was in the houses for a long time, nearly a month. And that's a very particular type of flooding because it causes, the fact that the water's in the house for a long time causes a lot of damage in the way of damp and mould and just, so it was fairly horrible. The authorities, and that included the council, the environment agency, fire and rescue, the police, the coast guards, everybody who came in, they were stretched very thinly and there was no way that we could expect them to do everything for us. We had to help ourselves. So has it brought your community closer together? I think so in many ways and it's not just about the flood plan group but it's about things that we've been able to do as a village to engender this sort of sense of community that people need because you don't just live in a house, you live in a community and you need to know your neighbours and that all helps when there's a crisis for people to help each other. Hello, I'm Gordon Swindles. I'm a volunteer flood warden coordinator at Martock near Yeovil. The parish of Martock has a number of locations which flood and in November 2012 the road which you can see in front of us here is the main route from the A303 dual carriageway to the village and 14 vehicles were abandoned on that road. As a result of that we then got uh, permanent drop down flood signs for a couple of locations in the parish together with cones, signs, lights and the police gave us written authority to close the roads in the interest of road safety. The sluice operator here is a chap called Johnny March. Johnny quite often spends long time in the little hut by the sluices to operate the sluices. Okay, so I'm Johnny March and uh, I'm flood warden at Parrot Works. And the Parrot Works weir here is, is operated in very high water when the level of the river at Chiselborough pushes through the flood level. Um, we only tend to operate the gate when that happens and the idea is that uh, we control the level of the river upstream so that the road to the hospital in South Cleverson doesn't flood. Now that can happen at any time of day or night, often does and the, the, the river pushes through quite quickly here within sort of six to twelve hours unless it's continual rain um, but that does often mean uh, keeping the weir clear and uh, operating through sort of some pretty severe weather conditions and at all times of the day. We're now going to see David Brett who will be working at the Odcombe flood storage ponds uh, David is one of our mobile wardens who basically can go to any of the various flood locations in the parish. When we know a storm's coming, if we can, we drop the level of the pond uh, and lock it off and then let the storm come and fill it up. Uh, when the storm's passed, we open it and drain it down. And this actually works very well. Have you enjoyed being part of the community of flood wardens at Martok? I have, I, I love it. Uh, I mean, I think uh, we are sometimes called a mixture of Grandad's army and, and the last of the summer wine. We all tend to be a little bit on the older side. It would be lovely to have some younger people come in, but uh, the sort of work we do very often is during the daytime and, and uh, most people don't have the time to do it. It's quite communal because we usually manage, uh, when we've done any work or anything else, if we judged it right, some watering hole somewhere might be open that we can uh, go and refresh ourselves. So it's, it's, a, it's a community spirit and, and uh, it's paid off and it's nice. So yes, I do enjoy it very much. What is Gordon like as a flood coordinator? Gordon's great. <laughs> Gordon is Gordon, he's, he's great. Gordon is very good. He, uh, he, he takes care of everybody, he looks after us. <laughs> he 
phones us up to make sure we're all all right. <laughs> Now we're going to go and see Tony Hollis, who operates the sluices at Gorebridge Mill. My name's Tony Hollis. Um, I run, or we run, with my wife Linda, the local bed and breakfast. It's called The Wheelhouse. Um, and it's one of the local ones around in Martock, Kingsbury area. We also look after the sluice gates and look after the level of the river. If we don't anticipate the floods, right, uh, it actually floods the adjoining roads. So it becomes impassable. Uh, it also means that I can't go down the local pub because I've known the sluice gates quick enough. So anyway, so it's quite important that we do that. What's the uh, local pub? The local, the Wyndham Arms. <laughs> My name's Henry Quinney. I work in the Flood Resilience Team for the Environment Agency in Wessex. I know you know Gordon. Uh, what, what do you make of Martok's plan and Gordon's role as a coordinator? Yeah, that's excellent. I mean, that is a community that really are grasping the nettle and saying, we are resilient, we are ready to go. Um, the work that they do to reduce the risk of flooding within their community and sharing that story empowering their neighbours and community. That is that's such a fantastic thing, which is replicated in other areas around Somerset. And it's really important because that community are fully aware of their risk. My name is Sarah Elliott and I'm the main fundraiser on the Ham Village Flood Committee. And can you tell us a bit about the history of Ham Village? So we first had a committee in about 2000 and it was originally brought together by the founding members, some of who still are on the committee to this day. And the founder members really wanted to refresh the committee. So we started that in 2017 and we thought what we really should do is spend time with people in the village and understanding how they felt about flooding or the risk of flooding and what they felt we could best do as a committee to prepare the village, protect the village, um, make the village resilient. A very instrumental person on our committee is Robin Hewish, who is our chair. Robin is a master of sourcing all of the equipment that we've got. Um, I get the money, he spends the money. That's a, that's a good arrangement. One of the things with the uh, flood defences we have in, in Ham is, is the work that they did in 2008 really made, gave us really good defences. Um, and, and we hope, we can never be sure, but we hope that, uh, that we won't suffer flooding in the future. Um, but also, when we did the survey of the, uh, the villagers, one of the things that came out was that there was a lot of anxiety about the, um, about the flooding. And that actually there was probably a greater anxiety than there was a threat. Um, here we're in the centre of the village, essentially. Um, and this is one of our most important flood defences. Uh, under, underground here there is a large sump and a, a pump and all the surface water that comes into the village um, when there's high water in the river um, the, um, the water comes up through the, through the drains and in the, uh, the surface water and this pump actually drives it back into the, to the river. I'm Damon Bridge and I'm a conservation officer uh, with the RSPB on the Somerset Levels and Moors. Uh, so my, my job sort of working across the, the whole of the Levels and Moors, all the floodplain land, looking at opportunities to enhance the land for wildlife conservation. One of the biggest threats to some of the key species here, which are the 
breeding wading birds which um, nest on the ground in the, in the fields and the meadows. We're seeing increasing patterns of very dry periods during the spring and these are birds that need pools of water, uh, soft peat soils to probe, uh, lots of insects attracted to the water and that drying through the spring uh, into the summer is is probably one of the one of the is a bigger threat than than winter flooding. I'm Jill Pettit. Um, I'm the parish clerk of the local council, so my role is to support them in the work that they do. And could you tell us a little bit about the flooding that happened um, in October last year? Well, I'm in one of the two houses that were most badly affected, so I was in my house all the time, bailing, and you just see the village come out in force and start helping, really. It was very sudden. I had four fountains in my kitchen of water spouting up. It went up over my wellies. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't one of these great four-foot-high floods, but it was enough to be concerning of course, and uh, you, basically you just spend your time bailing like mad, even though that you know you're wasting your time because the water's still rising. My name's Gail Parker and I'm a parish councillor and chair of the Flood Committee. So one of the things is that for several years now we've had a flood plan, so you know, where things are kept, what to do if there's a flood, who the village can contact if they're worried, all that sort of thing. And the idea is to sort of be something recognisable that the village can cohere to and come and talk to. We want to eventually to be able to sort of have um, community events where we can even demonstrate how to put the flood barriers up at front doors, all that sort of thing. So the flood committee is sort of a practical way of trying to make the village more resilient and, and cope better with, with floods in general, but also with the sort of the feeling that this is likely to be happening more frequently and potentially um, with a much bigger impact actually because of climate change. I'm Teresa Bridgman and I founded the West Somerset Flood Group back in 2014. It's a group of towns and parishes. All of us have got problems with flooding. All of us have been doing things on our own. And it seemed to me that it was time to get that message out there. But it also turned into a group. We got together to do a report and then we wanted to go on meeting up and helping each other, discussing our shared problems, and that's been going on ever since. West Somerset floods in an incredibly different way from the levels and moors. You can see why. We're standing on Dunkery Beacon. The headwaters of the X and the Baal are over to my left. Behind me, we have the high ridge of the Brendan Hills, where water comes down into a number of small communities. And all of these little rivers on this edge of the West Somerset Hills go down into the sea, into the Bristol Channel. My name is Brenda Maitland Walker and I'm the acting chair of the West Somerset Flood Group. We're on the outskirts of Carhampton, um, which borders Dunster. There have been several issues. We suffer from surface water flooding from the surrounding land and the A39, which runs through the village to Minehead, was subject to several areas of flooding where we could not get through and they had to close the road. The funding was um, looked into in order to try and see if there was a way of alleviating the, the water coming off the hills and onto the road. Without the ability to apply for funding from the Somerset Rivers Authority, a number of projects in West Somerset just would not have happened. 
In West Somerset, we have, on our very short, very fast rivers, we have villages strung out from top to bottom along the watercourses. And one of the issues, of course, is that you don't make the floods worse downstream, but it also means that people upstream can help the people downstream. And one example of that is on the Washford River, where road water suffers from flashy flooding about in the mid catchment and Luxborough further upstream is able to help out because they've got the land that you can do things on to slow that flow down. I'm Mary Coles and I'm road water flood warden coordinator. And can you tell us a little bit about the flooding that road water can experience? It's mostly when the high rainfall and it's surface water flooding rather than the river flooding, although it does flood in certain places. Dave and his wardens in Luxborough have been very, very helpful. And we coordinate and liaise together on everything really, because we have our flood meetings and bring up anything that we have problems with. Would you tell me a bit about the flooding that can happen here in Luxborough? A few years ago now, we had a, quite a bad situation with flooding coming off the hill and down the road, which made a lot of damage to the road, closed the road for quite a while and uh, that's really how I got involved with, with the flood group because it all, didn't only affect us, it affected road water, the village below us. They um, got some grants for doing small things like slotting, which is basically like a roller with knives in it that uh, lets the water down into the soil if it's compacted and leaky dams and some extra ponds, all sorts of different things. What's really good is that pe local people have said, oh, we now see that the river doesn't come up too quick when it does come up, it stays up for a bit longer, but not as high, and then falls off. So that is now reducing the effect on the river at road water, which is what our aim is, really. I'd just like to close by paying tribute to all the partners who've worked so well together under the umbrella of the SRA since it was formed all the way back in 2014. Climate change is facing us, we need to work together in the future and I commend all the work that all partners have done and look forward to working with them for a very long time into the future. Close my eyes, you're looking back at me as real as autumn air. I take and breathe.